I feel very awkward about the face, seriously. I, it still freaks me out. I had a very, very negative emotional reaction to it when I saw it for the first time. And I still feel awkward when I'm close to it and have to look it in the eyes. Um, because it's just, this, it's just this tiny bit off, I hope. Yeah. I mean, it's not, I mean, it, there is a resemblance, I suppose, but um, it's not quite what I see in the mirror. But the first time I was able to flex my wrist uh, with that prosthetic limb, but I'd never been able to do that before. Of course, it was a bit frustrating to be told that not only is this technology not ready yet, but also when it becomes available, it'll be so expensive that it'll be completely out of question for me. I won't be able to afford it and my insurance won't pay for it. Mm. And that also highlights some of the ethical issues at stake when we look at technology like this. The technology is there and more and more will become available, but fewer and fewer people will be able to get it funded through their insurance companies. One of my personal favorites is the artificial blood that runs through these tubings. And because this is made of nanoparticles that are able to bind oxygen and give them off, just like real blood can do. But this is not a real blood, this is nanoparticles. Mm. And I thought that was absolutely science fiction. So I thought that was very, very impressive. Also the fact that they're very close to an implantable artificial kidney that will actually be able to replace a failing kidney without the necessity of a kidney transplant. Mm. Now think of the great benefits some technology like that would bring. I knew fairly much about prosthetic limbs, apparently, but what we can't, what, well, what we're close to accomplishing in terms of artificial organs, I find is absolutely mind-boggling. What we did was to put a glucose-sensitive gel inside a device that holds insulin and the glucose sensitive gel senses when the insulin is needed because it senses the glucose level going up and down. So it acts as a gateway for mm -hmm. the insulin reservoir and um, allows enough insulin to come out for the duration that the blood glucose has gone high, but it then shuts down so that the blood glucose doesn't go down too low, which is very important. And um, the advantage of that is that for people who are diabetic and who have perhaps two or three injections a day, they're controlling it for short periods of the day only. But with this, it would actually be controlling it minute by minute. And the effect of that is good long term. We've spent a long time in the lab watching it work in, in uh, lab experiments, but actually preclinically we found it worked very, very well for five or six weeks. So we're absolutely delighted with its activity. We know it'll take a long time to, to get through the hurdles for that, but we actually made one that I've got in my hand here, which is a much neater version of this, and um, we think that perhaps it could look like that. It would be implanted, so this bit's the business end of it, and that will go deep into the peritoneum next to the liver where it's needed. And this part here will come close up to the surface of the skin so that it can be refilled when it needs to be. There have been stem cells and cell replacements and pancreatic transplants for decades, but we haven't got there yet. And so on the concept that it, there are more than one way to skin a cat, I guess that there may be room for bionic pieces.